I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Peter here. Today I will be back with another new uh, video, and this time it is a new episode on SFF Spotlight, episode 63 now. And as usual, this is a series of videos where I will talk about uh, new book news, new special edition, new Kickstarter campaign, and noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. But this time, I don't actually have any new noteworthy release to spotlight, so instead I will spotlight some video games at the end of this video, because these this, this video games, they do deserve some talking about, at least. But first, like usual, I'll be starting this episode of SFF Spotlight by talking about some new book news or cover reveal first. And the first one is about one of the most underrated first book in a trilogy that I have ever read. And the first book, it was The Helm of Midnight, and we finally have a cover reveal and also a release date for the third book and the final book in the trilogy. The title of the trilogy is The Five Penalties, and the title of this book is The Teeth of Dawn by Marina Lost Tether. I absolutely loved uh, The Helm of Midnight. I think it is a great blend of mystery and epic fantasy plus thriller uh, as well. And the cover to the Teeth of Dawn is illustrated by the same artist who did the cover of the second book, Reiko Murakami. And I think it looks great and it is fitting uh, to the cover of the first two books in the trilogy. I am so looking forward to reading this trilogy, but at the same time, I'll be doing a second read of The Helm of Midnight first, most likely next year because this one is being released in January 2025. But yeah, I am pumped about this. And if you love murder mystery in an epic fantasy setting, try reading The Helm of Midnight. I think it is criminally underrated. And then after that, the second book that I want to spot at today, this is for the sequel to The Gods of the Weird Wood by R.J. Barker. The title of this book, as Warlords of the Weird Wood. Weird Wood or Weird Wood? I don't know how to pronounce that. But yeah, this is the sequel uh, to The Gods of the Weird Wood. I have read almost everything by R.J. Barker. I have read uh, the Wounded Kingdom trilogy. I have also read the Bone Ship trilogy or the Taicha trilogy. And I love these two trilogies very much. I think R.J. Barker is a great fantasy author. And I haven't read uh, this new series from him yet. But right now, I'm still not sure whether I should uh, wait for the third book to be out first before tackling the trilogy or not because, well, personally speaking, when it comes to reading R.J. Barker's books, it seems like I have, it seems like my experience with reading them improved much more when I read through the trilogy in a closer period of time rather than waiting for one book at a time, like one book a year. But that's just me. If you have read the Wounded Kingdom trilogy and also the Tad Cha trilogy, do not wait and read this trilogy as soon as possible. The cover art is once again done by Duncan uh, Spilling. Moving on to the self-published fantasy portion now. First, we have the cover reveal to The Knife of Soros by E.J. Doble. This is book 2.5 in the Blood and Steel saga. I still haven't read The Horns of Grief yet, but I have read uh, the first book and also the prequel novella in the Blood and Steel saga. I think they are good grimdark fantasy novels and novella, but I hope The Horns of Grief will be a superior novel compared to the first two titles in the series that I have read. And also, many people do say that The Horns of Grief is the best book by E.J. Dobe so far, and this one, The Knife of Sorrows, it will take place, I think, after the ending of The Horns of Grief, but before the events of the upcoming third book in the, in the main series. Of, of course, I cannot tell because I haven't read The Horns of Grief yet, but it seems like even from the premise alone, it will contain a lot of spoilers, so I cannot say anything about the details of the plotline here. But the cover art, just like all the books in the series so far, it is once again illustrated by Diego Spezzoni, and I think it is beautiful, so intricate. I love the knife, and I love the lightning, and all the details that goes into this cover art. It is beautiful. And then finally, the last book and cover able to spotlight before I talk about new Kickstarter campaign and also special editions. This is about War of the Hounds by David Hopkins. This is supposedly a prequel novella, again, that you can get for free by subscribing to the author's newsletter. And well, it is a free novella, feel free to do that. And I have done it myself. But yeah, uh, this is the prequel, I think the prequel novella to The Dryad's Crown. I haven't read the main novel yet. War of the Hounds is inspired by Shakespeare's Henry V uh, story. And the cover art, it is done by the same artist who did the cover art of The Dryad's Crown, Rena Violet. If you have read The Dryad's Crown, let me know what you think about it. I actually just got the physical copy of The Dryad's Crown and it is 
well, although I think that the cover art is alright, but at the inside, it is beautiful. It contains a lot of beautiful black and white interior illustrations, and I hope this book will have them, maybe one or two. But anyway, I look forward to reading this series too uh, someday, most likely sooner than later. And now, that's all I have on the section of new book news and cover reveals. Time to talk about some Kickstarter campaigns and special editions. There is one special edition in particular that I really want to spot that because I am definitely involved in the production of that, but I will come to that later. First, let's talk about Kickstarter campaign. The first one that I want to spotlight is On the Shoulder of Titans by Andrew Rowe. The Kickstarter campaign is live now and it is fully funded already. And this is published by Raidmark in collaboration with Podium Audio. I own a copy of Sufficiently Advanced Magic published by them and it is absolutely stunning, beautiful. And this will feature the same artist working on the edition again. So the cover art and interior artwork by Daniel Kamarudin and also designed by Sean T. King. And if the first book is the sign of quality, I think we can expect the same level of high quality again from On the Shoulders of Titans by Andrew Ru. I love uh, this book, but I love the first book more, Sufficiently Advanced Magic. And honestly, I haven't really read past through the Arcane Ascension series past uh, On the Shoulder of Titans yet, so I cannot say too much about the quality of the next books in the series, even though I did struggle a bit with the beginning of the third book. But anyway, that's a story for another time. On the Shoulder of Titans by Andrew Rowe, the Kickstarter campaign is live now. And if you in particular have backed the Kickstarter campaign of the first book, then make sure to back this Kickstarter campaign as well. And the same goes for On the Other Way by Derek Smythe. Now this one, hasn't gone live yet. But if you pledge to the first book, The Other Magic by Derek Smythe, well, I think that book is going to, I think that book is going to be dispatched to the backers uh, really soon, uh, myself included. I have seen the dummy copy of the test print run uh, from the author and it looks beautiful already. I cannot wait to see the final product of The Other Magic. And yeah, this is uh, The Other Way, the sequel to The Other Magic. And the author has actually told me that Joshua Kairos one of the artists ha that has worked on A Song of Ice and Fire and also The Lord of the Rings will be involved in some of the artwork, maybe one or two. If you have backed the other magic, then make sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign page for this one as well and click uh, to be notified when the Kickstarter campaign is live. And moving on to the next one, I have featured this in my previous SFF Spotlight episode. This is about the new TTRPG of the Stormlight Archive that is being published by Brotherwise Games. So in the previous episode, I showed this beautiful artwork by Kate Burmak and this time we have another beautiful artwork absolutely beautiful artwork of Shalan by Justina Dura. I have always been a fan of Justina Dura's artwork and well I'm amazed that she is involved in this production as well and the artwork that she did for Shalan and her other personas well, it's beautiful, so beautiful. Look at the color blues here. And although I'm not too interested in TTRPG per se, I'm interested in learning about the lore and also, well, learning more about the artwork that being that is being put inside the book here. And I think based on the tweets, I think it is possible to get just the art book or the lore book here. And I have a feeling I will try to do that depending on the price, of course. But yeah, the two artworks that I have seen so far, they are absolutely gorgeous. And the last Kickstarter campaign or the backer kit campaign that I want to spot today, this is for The Dark Thorn by Sean Speakman, the revised or the preferred uh, edition with the cover art by Magali Villeneuve and also uh, interior artworks, more than 10 interior artworks by Don Mites. I think some of you might know who Don Mites is. He has worked a lot on uh, the Reef War Saga series or Reef War Empire series by uh, Raymond Evais. As for Magali Villeneuve, I don't think I have to say too much about her now. I mean, this is Magali. She is one of the best artists in the fantasy genre. She has worked on Lord of the Rings, A Song of Ice and Fire, and also many, many incredible works. So yeah, Sean Speakman is pulling all the stops when it comes to the matter of artwork here, such as this beautiful map by Jared Blando as well. And it has been fully funded more than 115,000 uh, dollars already, I think. And there is still plenty of time to back this backer kit uh, campaign. I have read The King Killing Queen, which is supposed to be the prequel novel uh, to The Dark Thorn, and it was a great story. I look forward to reading The Dark Thorn as well. But that's it for the topic. 
on the section of Kickstarter campaign. Now let's talk about special editions. Before I move on to talk about broken bonding stuff, the first one that I want to spotlight is about, well, it is still related to Sean Speakman. This is about a new book by Grim Oak Press, and this is for The Prince of Fool by Mark Lawrence. This is the fully colored, the fully illustrated edition. And once again, we will have the illustrations from Jason Chun, all of them fully colored. And yeah, it is possible to get this one now. I think on the 19th uh, of June. So yeah, that is uh, today. So if you are a fan of Mark Lawrence and you want the, well, most likely the ultimate edition of the Red Queen's War Trilogy, this is your opportunity to do it. I love the Red Queen's War Trilogy, but personally, I am more of a fan of the Book of the Ancestor Trilogy, and I'm waiting for the Omnibus edition of that. But yeah, this is a great edition. I mean, this is Jason Chan's artwork. Jason Chan's artwork are always top tier. Now let's move on to the broken binding stuff, and I want to start with something special. Well, at least for me anyway, because this is the reveal of the Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee. The cover art is illustrated by Randy Vargas and also the edges and the end papers, all of them are illustrated by Shahris Look, I think many of you should know by now that the Green Bone Saga is my favorite trilogy of all time. It is at the number one spot, especially when we're talking about completed fantasy trilogy, this is my personal number one favorite. And with the limited time span, even though I have been working on this project, well, since the month of February, I think, but yeah, we have a limited uh, deadline to work on this project and still I want nothing but the best for it. And well, Randy Vargas and also Sharis Look, they really nailed what I wanted from the artworks. The theme of fighting for your family, for your tradition, for your culture, and for your honor are some of the main themes coursing through the entire Greenbone Saga series. And I tried to definitely deliver that to the artist uh, regarding the cover art and also the end paper. And I think Randy Vargas and Sharis Look, it really seems like they took a pick inside my brain and just delivered them on the paper. They look after stunning, they elevated my art brief into something extraordinary. And yeah, if you have read the books, you will know what these scenes implicates and also I think the paraphernalia in the end paper here. If you have read the books, you will know the significance behind each items and illustration being put in the paraphernalia here. And I don't have anything from Jet Legacy to showcase yet, but you know what? I think what we have so far should be sufficient to showcase just how beautiful this edition will be. Let me know what you think about this. I am the art director for this project, just like for Malazan Book of the Fallen and also the Sun Eater. And I am really proud to have work on the Greenbone Saga. I mean, as I said, this is my favorite trilogy of all time. And well, speaking of my favorite trilogy of all time, I can give you a hint that uh, the next series, the next subscription series, because Greenbone Saga is for the month of July until the month of September, and the next subscription series, I am working as the art director as well. And it is for one of my favorite series. So, well, feel free to take a guess on what that is. But yeah, uh, I'm really happy with this one. I hope, I cannot wait. I really cannot wait to get my hands on the physical copy. And speaking of Sun Eater earlier, well, I have revealed this beautiful end paper art by Rene Eichner. On, this is for the back end paper of Empire of Silence Broken Binding Edition by uh, Christopher Rocchio. For this one, I and also Christopher Rocchio are the art directors for this entire project. And yeah, as I said, every Friday it will be titled Sun Eater Friday because every Friday I will reveal a new end paper art that we have worked on. Not only end paper, I will reveal uh, the cover art as well eventually, but first end paper. And yeah, this is for interrogating Uvanari. That, well, this is a scene from uh, the Empire of Silence. If you have read the book, you will know what scene uh, this is. And I think it turned out uh, really well. Let me know what you think about the artwork. I will say though that this is not my personal favorite of the end paper art that Rene Eichner did for the Sun Eater The Broken Binding Edition. Don't get me wrong, this one is really good and I'm really happy with how this one turns out, but my favorites are in Demon in White. And we will get there in a few weeks time because in this Friday, as I said, I will reveal the front end paper art of the Howling Dark by Rene Eichner again. And then moving on to the last two special editions announced by the Broken Binding. Well, for these two, I did not work on them, but for these two, they are The Doors of Midnight by R.R. Virdi. There is a special edition coming from the Broken Binding for uh, this series, just like the first book. 
the first binding and then after that we also have the bright sword by Lev Grossman I don't I don't think I have read anything by Lev Grossman yet I have tried reading the magician but that one really did not work for me I have tried watching the TV show as well it did not work for me as well I hope that this one which I think will be an Arthurian retelling fantasy story will be a better fit uh, for me that's my hope anyway but that's it for the announcements from the broken binding as for the next one this is about new romancer by William Gibson and this is coming from folio society in the month of August there aren't too many details on this yet only just the announcement that new romancer by William Gibson a special edition from folio society is coming in the month of august but that's it i know that new romancer is a very popular sci-fi book loved by many authors and also many readers so yeah if you are interested in this one uh, take a look at the page that i link in the description down below and finally the last special edition this is not technically the official announcement because this is about this is about hints announced by suntop press suntop just announced their hints for the month of july August and also September 2024 publication and well honestly speaking I have only bought one book from the Santa Press and that one is Boy's Life by Robert McCammon because that one is one of the best standalone books of all time in my opinion and well there is one more book that I consider to be one of the best standalone books of all time and again it is by Robert McCammon that title is Swan Song and it seems very likely that the month of August the book will be Swan Song by Robert McCammon if it ends up coming true and we're 99% uh, sure that this is Swan Song well then it means that in a year Santa Press will be releasing Boy's Life and also Swan Song and well there's a good chance I will spend my money on it again <laughs> but yeah that's really uh my prediction and for the month of september it will be american gods by neil gaiman i haven't read that one yet but i know this one will be well it will excite more people i think but personally speaking i am more excited about swan song by robert mccammon hopefully this one is true i cannot wait to see what santa press will do with swan song so that's a wrap on the section of special editions and now we move on to the final section of today's episode of sff spot Art, and that is to talk about tv show and movie adaptation plus three video games that I want to spotlight. The first one is about the Lord of the Rings War of the Rohirrim. We have some details about this finally as long as first images and surprisingly I did not actually expect that War of the Rohirrim uh, even though I know that this will be an animation I did not expect it will be done in Japanese anime uh, medium and well as a fan of anime I personally am very happy about this and the first images that I have seen, they all look so good and hopefully uh, the final result will be amazing as well. But let me know whether you are excited about War of the Rohirrim uh, or not. And speaking of animation, Arcane Season 2 just had a new teaser drop and it's looking absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to watch Arcane Season 2 and they also announced that Season 2 of Arcane will be the final season. But do note this is not the final season of this entire universe this is just the conclusion to Vi and Jinx's story there are many many characters in League of Legends and I think this I think this is a sign of infinite infinite amount of money being poured into the animation and also being gained and I will watch them all if they're all as good or even better than Arcane but yeah I am so excited about Arcane Season 2. Let me know whether you are excited about this or not. And finally, on the topic of TV show adaptations, it seems like three body problem. Uh, the Netflix adaptation is really getting another new season, and this time it will be the final season. So, in total, there will be three seasons in the three body problem. So, that's to cover three body problem, uh, Dark Forest, my favorite, and also that's and the conclusion uh, to the Remembrance of Earth's Past or the three body problem uh, trilogy. But that's not all, because apparently there will be a new set of Chinese movie adaptation coming for this series again. This time it is done in movie format, not TV show format. So I guess that means in total we will have three, <laughs> three adaptation of the Three Body Problem trilogy. I have actually watched the Netflix adaptation and although I do think that it is good in many parts, but also 
I think some of the changes, because I think it is intentionally done to globalize uh, the adaptation, but I do not think they are uh, necessary changes. I still love the book more i think i cannot deny though that the tv show adaptation do make the story more accessible to newcomer uh to the series so yeah that's definitely something positive to think about and finally moving on to the final section this is to talk about some video games and the first one is about dragon age velgard i have played every dragon age games and dragon age velgard originally titled dread wolf well it looks really good as well i was a bit worried after i watched uh, the teaser or the CGI trailer, it wasn't really it wasn't really displaying what I love about Dragon Age, but thankfully the gameplay reveal it seems really good. It seems like I will love this one again as hopefully as much as I love Dragon Age Inquisition. But the biggest surprises of the recent game reveal, and this is what I want to spot that this is about Claire Obscure Expedition uh, 33. This one, this turn-based RPG, it looks absolutely amazing. It's gorgeous, the art direction is beautiful, the voice acting is stellar already. And then, what surprised me even more is that the gameplay, the battle system, it reminded me of The Legend of Dragoon, a game that I loved so much during the PlayStation 1 era. And yeah, I used to play The Legend of Dragoons uh, many times. And well, seeing Expedition 33, it reminded me of that in the best way. And I cannot deny this is one of my most anticipated games of 2025. And speaking of anticipated game, well, the last topic to close this episode of SFF Spotlight, this is about uh, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. It is coming. Yeah, it is coming in two days on the 21. On the 21st of June, Elden Ring, the Shadow of the Earth Tree will be out and that will be the death of my productivity. So yeah. Consider yourself warned that there might be a chance that my video, my video output will decrease because I will be playing that game. <laughs> and so far, as expected, every reviews, almost every reviews is a perfect score for Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. And yeah, I cannot wait to play this game. Very excited about it. And yeah. That's really it. That's the end of today's episode of SFS Spotlight. Do let me know what you think about every news that I spotlighted in today's episode on the comment section down below. And yeah, that's it from today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.